Hello and welcome back to uh, sunny North Cornwall for a change. I've just uh, come down my path and I've just come across uh, the first slow worm of the year and I'm going to make sure it, uh, you know, escapes any of the cats that we got kicking around here. So I'm just going to put it uh, somewhere it can shuffle off and go about its uh, business. So yeah, it's a fair size one and it looks like it's had something to eat because it's quite swollen in the belly area. So I should imagine that's full of um, insects and things it's been able to get around our garden. Like I said, I keep our garden as wild as I can. So I've just rescued it, like I said, that plant pot it was on the path. I'm just going to put it up here on top of the hedge in the sun and see what it does. Doesn't look like it wants to do a lot. There it goes. I say it's in direct sunlight there, so that'll give it a, a good chance to recharge the batteries. There it goes, slithering off. I'm just going to stick around to make sure no bird gets to it before it finds a home. There it goes the last of it slipping away down into the hedge. Well, I was thinking our garden wasn't going to really do a lot, but at the moment uh, we've got potatoes coming up, peas, broad beans, lettuce and cabbages. So I've actually got uh, cabbages coming up there in a line right the way to the end. I've got lettuces coming up. And I'm on my guard against sparrows and slugs with them. Broad beans are doing quite well. They're coming up uh, with a lot of uh, vigour and enthusiasm. The same as the peas, they're coming up quite well. And so are the potatoes. One just pushing up there. I've got some there. Some more over there as well. And as you can see, they're just beginning to push up. So, you know, hopefully this won't be a dead loss for myself. The grass is coming up quite well. That's all getting pretty much established now. Some of it's escaped into the vegetable patch, but I'll weed that when I definitely know what I'm actually taking out and it's nothing that uh, I want to keep in there. So yeah, it's, it's actually starting to uh, all come to life. Our strawberries are doing uh, very well. There's a lot of flowers and we've moved them into the sun now and they're doing very well. They were over there, but it only gets sun there this time of day. So we brought them out here to get sun all day. This um, plum tree has got a few um, little baby plums on it, if you can see there. Not many. It didn't really throw a lot of um, blossom, but um, there's a few more underneath there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get a crop, but I'm not too worried about that because it's got a good canopy of leaves. This plant, or tree shall I say, was, in our thoughts, dying because it's it had a fungal infection and all this bark was gaping wounds it has healed itself and i believe as you can see there's still a little bit there to heal but um yeah this tree looks like it's healing itself so this season with us feeding it i hope it gives it enough uh, regeneration to survive and next year I'll worry about getting a crop from it but this year I just want it to survive and it's got a really green canopy of leaves so it's really you know doing its utmost and best I think to um, heal itself now this is the apple tree that never um, gave us any apples and this is going to be the first year even though it's our biggest tree as you can see I've got baby apples coming there and up there so yeah the first year i'm going to get apples off this tree and i'm quite excited to taste them 
But it's this tree here which is the star of our show. It just has apples, baby apples everywhere. For the size of this tree, we actually get a bucket load of apples from it. In fact, that's why I've had to give it support. It gets so laden, it will snap. Um, you know, everywhere you look, there's baby apples starting to come. They're just, they're just, they're just everywhere. Like I said, you can get a bucket off that tree, and it's basically just a sapling. But um, yeah, it, it it never fails to uh, disappoint this tree. Now Bluey needs uh, a bit of, um, shall we say, care and attention. She's got a condition called curly toe. She's had it from when she was very young. Um, we didn't take her back to the breeder because she would have been basically, um, you know, got rid of because basically uh, it was a commercial enterprise for them. So we kept her even though she's got this slight little disability. And, you know, she's had a good couple of years already where she wouldn't have if we'd have taken her back. But it does mean I've got to clip her claws because cause her feet don't sit square like that. They're all crooked like that. The claws tend to grow extremely long. So I have to get in there and cut them. And um, I do need assistance with that. So I'm waiting till I can get some help. And that should be here within a few moments. This one here I can just see the quick about there. So I'm just going to take those, this little bit here off over here. Like I said, um, I'll probably have to do this another time just before winter. There. Straight off like that. No need to go too far. If you go too far, it can cause the chicken a bit of discomfort. And um, obviously a little bit of... Um, uh, it will bleed slightly. Just a bit of um, antiseptic cream. Right. As you can see, I've covered her with a blanket. I've got her wings tucked in so she can't damage or break them. And because she's got her head covered, she's more subdued. Because I don't handle these very much, um, they are quite feisty. So basically, um, I'm just going to unwrap her and put her back in now. And it's as simple as that. And that's that baby oak tree in the last video I said I was deciding whether to rescue or not. Well, I did. I've put it in a pot and um, it seems to be doing okay. It's got these other two ones to keep it company. So um, yeah, I'll see how this uh, oak tree develops and possibly in a couple years time, I might actually be able to sell it and find it a new home. We never actually buy our plant pots. We always look out on the uh, free ads and, and shall we say methods like that and there's always people willing to give away plant pots so we have a whole variety and raft of them which we haven't had to purchase and if you're looking to grow a lot of um, plants and you're looking for plant pots i would suggest you try and get some recycled ones from the same method as i do which is like i said or the free sites or where people are just giving them give them away beside the roadside because obviously they no longer need them. And then that way you're recycling and helping the environment as well. Right, my back hedge hasn't been touched and I was considering getting the streamer out and just taking it back a bit. But that slow worm that you saw in the beginning of the video has made me think twice and whether I should just let it go just that little fraction longer to give all the wildlife that little bit more of a chance. But as you can see, my hedge is at that point. It could possibly do with a little bit of attention. Well, that was just a very quick uh, look around our gardens. And um, yeah, it's been very, well, very nice and sunny here today. Very pleasant indeed. But uh, I'm gonna call this a day and I'll catch you again. So all the best.